I'm going to show you a couple of things that uh, over time, over the time I've been using Scratch, have actually become issues for me that um, I think had I understood better how to do some of these things, it would have made uh, life a lot simpler. So there are just a few simple things that I think will help you when it comes to creating a larger project and changing, you know, from scene to scene and things like that. So for starters, um, I'm going to... I'm going to, for this project, assume that I want to use several different scenes or, or, or backdrops. So right now, if you notice, when I'm working with my sprite, my options here are scripts, costumes, and sounds. When I switch to the stage, this changes to scripts, backgrounds, and sounds, and still sounds. But I, the thing that changed was backdrops. So when I'm in my backdrop area, I could change my backdrops. And here I'm going to choose from the library, and let's say I want to use this desert backdrop. Now, for some reason, I probably could have changed it here, but it didn't do it that way. So I'm going to get rid of the blank one, and I'm going to add a couple of other backdrops that we're going to use. Let's have this, um, let's see, and there's so many different options here. Um, let's try, oh, definitely the boardwalk. Our, our cat for this project is going to be walking around in a few different scenes. So right now I have desert, I have boardwalk, and we'll add one more. And we will say, there was one I saw before that I really like, this Berkeley mural. So now I have these three options. Now, by default, because I have the cat on the stage, he's going to essentially be in any of the um, backgrounds that, I, that I'm using, or the backdrops. So let's say that we want to start on the, in the desert one. Okay, probably have to walk from the desert to civilization. So the thing is, when we now deal with our script, and I should go to my costume because it's the script for him that I want, not the script for the backdrop. But I want to have him start out, and I want to do a few things. I'm going to say that when the flag is clicked, meaning, you know, basically we're going to start, I want a number of things to happen. One is I actually want to change the backdrop to the desert. Even though, oops, okay, so watch this. So I click it, it automatically changes to the desert. This is my way of saying, okay, I always want to start at the desert. Now, another thing is, a lot of times in Scratch, when you do something, like let's say I move him forward 100 steps, okay, and let's just say, just so we can um, see this better, I put a pause in here. So I wait a second. So here's what happens. I move forward, then I move forward again. Now, I, I often would get to a point where I'm like, wait a minute, that's not where I want him to start. I always want him to start here, right? So I can tell it that as part of the starting of my whole project. So right now, if you look at, here's my cat, and if you look down here, this X and Y coordinate, that's basically the X and Y coordinate of where he is. One of the neat things is, um, Scratch must realize you would want to do this often because I could change this manually. But right now, if I bring this, go to x negative 181, y negative 48, it's, it's really the spot he is right now. So I'm going to put that in here as well. So right now, let's say my cat is there and I start, he's going to go back and he's going to then move his 100 steps forward. Okay. Now let's just say I want him to say something. And that is going to be, for some reason, under looks. I'm going to say, hello. This desert is hot. Okay. So now I play it. He goes here for two seconds. He says that. Now let's say we want him to move along. And he's going to try to make his way off the desert. He's going to move, let's say, 200 steps forward. And that should bring him from there to about the end of the, well, maybe I'll make him move. I'll say, uh, say something else. Maybe he's thinking this time. I need to get out of here. Okay, and then we'll have him move another, let's say, 200 steps. Okay, so this gets him essentially to the end, let's say. Okay, so there he is. He's like essentially off the screen. So we want to now go to the next screen. Well, there are a number of ways to do this. 
well, really the best way to do this is to do something called send and receive. Like we're going to send a broadcast and receive is the way this works. So basically what, what the way Scratch uses this, and it's different from other programs I've used, which is probably why it was just confusing to me, is basically at a point when you want something to happen, you broadcast a message. And in this case, it's really like I'm broadcasting it from the cat. And I'll call this new message and I'll call it next. Uh, I'll call it, um, what am I? I'll just call it next scene. Okay. Uh, although, actually, I'm going to call this Berkeley uh, because that's where I want him to go next. So I have this Berkeley thing in here, right? So when it was somehow this message has to be received. So I could have it be that the cat still receives the message, or I could even have it be another character. Um, in fact, why don't we do it that way? Why don't we? Well, no, we'll stay with the cat for now. So we are going to say that when the cat receives the message, Berkeley, we are going to switch the backdrop to the Berkeley mural. And again, I'm going to have an, uh, have him move to, let's say, that spot again. One neat thing I could do is if I have this isolated or all this stuff here, I can, I can copy or duplicate anything. So if I right click here, I could duplicate this. If I were to right click here and duplicate it, I'd get that whole block of code which of course comes in handy at times. But let me just duplicate this so he goes back to the start essentially on this next next screen. So I'm gonna have him go back here. And, um, you know, why don't I do all this again, but I'll just make some changes. So there's that whole bit of code. So when it receives the message Berkeley, it's gonna switch to that backdrop, go to this spot, wait a second, move 100 steps. Now he's gonna say, civilization at last and then he's gonna say this place is cool all right and then because I have this broadcast again that would confuse things so I'm gonna dump that so now this is what I get So now he's in the new scene and civilization and this place is cool. And then he walks off that scene. Okay. So now, like I had said, let, let's say we want to um, add another uh, character in this, in the final scene. Okay. So I'm going to go to the backdrops now and I'll make this boardwalk the final one. Okay. Cause he was trying to make it to the water. Right. So now for this, for this, um, backdrop I want to um, so here's the code for my sprite whether I'm on the, whatever the backdrop is and I'm going to do another broadcast receive so I'm going to now uh, that was under events I'm going to now broadcast and I'll call this boardwalk okay and then when the cat receives boardwalk and again, just to make life easy, why don't I do cop duplicate all this? Okay, now he's going to do all this stuff, but of course, um, we made it to the beach. The water is so inviting. Okay, so we've got that. Now, right now, it'll be still just him, but why don't I go a little crazy and say that we have another sprite? that I'm going to add and maybe the, let's see, who do we want, right? Let's see. So the diver, and he's a cooler looking diver anyway, kind of matches. So I'm going to have this diver that for the diver, um, when let's just say, uh, events when, well, definitely when we receive the boardwalk message, we want him to, let's say, go to this spot so he's where we want him to start. Let's say we then have him um, turn, I still want to try that, turn negative uh, 15. But I think what happens is I also have to start him pointing in direction 90. 
So he's always starting in that until we turn him a little bit, okay? And then he's going to move uh, 300 steps. But let's say we also, um, we, I still think, well, let's try this for a second. So I think he's going to show up. So, so see, there he is. He's still in every scene right now. He's not going to move until the boardwalk scene, I believe, because he didn't receive that message yet. Okay, so then he did go, but he went kind of quickly. So we probably want a wait in there. So I'm going to have it events. Where is it? Wait, wait is under motion. Oh, where was wait? Well, we do want him to, we do want him to hide at the beginning. Um, okay, we do want him to show when this happens. And we want, let's just say, a little wait, which I'm just missing here, but it's probably somewhere right around, let's say, control, wait, um, let's say one sec, oh, no, let's do it the other way around. Okay, let's try that. Now, we'll play it through. Okay. So he is going, but you know what? I think he's just getting that message so quickly, and and I don't. I guess it has something to do with this part here. But um, but I am going to let's just see what if that does anything different. I, I wanted to start. Oh, you know what? No, he's. We want it to be like this. Okay, this should be the final test. He's going to wait way too long for us this time, but just want to exaggerate so you can see it. So now he's at that spot, and in five seconds he should jump back to there. But then you know what? I guess I guess what happens is he's continually receiving this message. So it's um, so maybe we need like another message saying um, broadcast, and we'll call this one. After he did that, we'll call this done, and then we'll have when he gets the message done, he um, goes, he, he, let's see, he comes back here, and let's say that the cat, when the cat receives message done, it will also just go back to like its starting spot, and then they'll both kind of stop, I do believe, uh, because it shouldn't do any of these other things. So just give it one last shot, and then we'll call it a wrap. Okay, that's funny too, because he went so fast that we don't see. So you see how... <laughs> how you get uh, many opportunities to iterate on what you're doing. In this case, I would probably say, let me just duplicate that wa that weight and make sure that after he moves the initial, oh, not him, oops, well, it doesn't matter. Um, go back to the diver. So the diver, maybe after it moves this, these steps, I have it, um, it goes the 300 steps, and then it's it broadcasts done. So in other words, at that point, it would start here. It would wait five seconds, which is probably too much. So three seconds. It would point. It would make sure it's pointing that direction. Then it would turn. So it's going to go up this way a little. It moves its 300 steps. It waits here five seconds, and then when it's done, it returns to there. So that's just showing you how you can control things based on events in the um, in it, and and especially the idea of broadcast uh, and receive to go to new uh, scenes, new levels in a game, and that sort of thing. The other important thing I really wanted to make sure you understood there is that I was kind of setting everything up the way I wanted at the beginning here by telling him when you know at the beginning I want him to be in this background specifically. 
I want it to be at this spot specifically before he does anything. Otherwise, every time you press it, he's starting from where he left off last time. Okay, I hope that makes sense, and uh, good luck using those as you build on your bigger projects.